Are you afraid of writing your script because you have no idea how to format it? Margins, intercut, parenthetical, I mean, what even is a slug line? Ew, what's that? Don't worry, after watching this video, you'll know everything you need to make a professional impression with producers and directors when delivering your scripts. And stick around until the end because I'll share some bonus tips with you, including a common mistake that can send your script right into the reader's trash. Let's dive in! These are the building blocks of a screenplay your header, your action descriptions, and your dialogue lines. A screenplay, or script, is a written document designed to be translated into film or TV. In a script, one page translates to roughly one minute of screen time. An animated movie script is around 90 pages long, meaning about 90 minutes. But this is not an exact measurement, it's just an approximation. Behold, cinema! By the way, if you're new here, I'm Pietro Schito and this is Rife for Animation, the YouTube channel that makes you a better storyteller. Take a moment to subscribe while you keep watching. A screenplay not only tells a story, but it also serves as a blueprint for the filmmakers. It's the one document that unifies the troupe, the director, actors, sound designer, editor, and artist. Everyone will read your script. Everyone. Everyone. Because everyone needs to understand it, screenplay format uses a set of rules that allows you to enjoy the story and identify the elements you need to turn that story into a film. Locations, action, characters, transitions, and more. For example, an actor can easily find dialogue lines because they stand out in the middle of the page. You'll learn how to write your dialogue in a little bit. Think about it this way. An architect might sketch a great building on a piece of paper, but they also must create a technical blueprint so that the engineers and construction crew can actually build it. Luckily, nowadays we have screenwriting software that allows you to focus on the story instead of worrying about margins, text spacing, page numbers, and revisions. I left a list of screenwriting apps in the video description, where you also find your free ultimate screenwriting format guide. Click on the link to download it and consult it anytime you have a screenplay format question. Now let's get practical and start writing. Screenplays are divided into scenes. You begin a new scene every time you change location or time. Scenes are introduced with a scene header, also called slugline, that expresses where and when your scene is happening. It must be in all caps and is composed of three parts. First, indicate whether the scene occurs outside, like in a street, exterior, or inside, like in a room or a hallway, interior. When your scene repeatedly moves from an interior to an exterior, or is in a place that's half inside, half outside, you might use interior slash exterior or exterior slash interior. Next, the location where the scene is taking place. It can be whatever you need, a town square, or someone's room, or an office. It's important to keep the exact same name for the same location throughout the script. If you write Emma's house in one scene, you cannot just write house in the next one. The producer needs to be able to record each location easily, so be consistent. Some locations may contain secondary spaces. A house might have a courtyard, hallways, kitchens, and dining rooms. In that case, we might decide to expand the slug line like this. When characters are in a big space, you can use a shot line to refer to specific spaces within a larger location. It's as simple as writing where we are in a single line, all caps. For example, the scene might happen in a street, so you'd write exterior, street, day. And after a brief description of the scene, you might write in all caps, busy intersection, outside various storefronts, street corner, or whatever you need. Uh, we made it! The last element in your slog line is an indication of time. Is your scene happening at daytime, day, or at nighttime, night? While day and night are the most common, it's not unusual to see words like morning, dawn, dusk, sunset, etc. Or phrases like later or moments later that indicate a progression of time. But unless it's crucial to the scene, I suggest you keep it simple and since in animation everything is created from scratch, it's common for animated script to skip this part of the slug line altogether. Now, if a character is moving from one location to another without an ellipsis of time, like entering the front door of a house, then, once the time is established in the first location, instead of day or night, we write the word continuous as the time indication. Please let me in. No. Now, 
the action block. Here is where you write a description of what the audience sees and hears, excluding dialogue. You should describe locations, characters, actions, and any details, but don't know very dodge. Keep it as short as you can and write only what's important. Remember that scripts are written in the present tense. There's no past or present. This has a lot to do with the most important principle you can learn about screenwriting format. Write only what's on screen. As an imaginative writer, your instinct will be to get deep into the character's emotions, describe their feelings, maybe even the memories that are brought back by a moment in the story, but this is not a novel. So show, don't tell. Make your writing visual and dynamic. Instead of writing your character is sad, describe how sad they look. Here's a tip. Match your writing style with the tone of the scene. If you're writing an action scene, make the writing dynamic, maybe using short sentences and rapid scene changes. And how do you get better at it? By reading a lot of scripts, which is one of the many activities we focus on in the Write for Animation Academy. If you want to discover all the other benefits besides the script reading club, head over to writeforanimation.com academy. The link is down below. Let's go! Whenever you introduce a character for the first time, you must capitalize their name and give a very brief description of who they are and how they look. Include their age, whether in parentheses or within the text in the action block. Keep your descriptions as short and as visual as you can. And be sure to leave artistic freedom to the director, actor and costume designer to make their contributions to the character. Next, dialogue. That's everything your characters say. A dialogue block begins with the name of the character talking in all caps. Below that, you write what you want them to say. And that's it. I heard this story about a fish. You can add a parenthetical to help communicate the intention, an emotion, or a simple action that the character is doing while talking. Oh no, we're gonna have to go to mom's. But try to avoid them unless absolutely necessary. For example, if the context makes it clear that the character is being sarcastic, there's no need to add a sarcastic in a parenthetical. How about a librarian? They're cool. Yes, amazing. Who wouldn't like working at a thankless job you're always in danger of losing due to budget cuts? Great. These are the basics, but before we get to some bonus tips, let's take a quick look at important elements you may find in a script. Transitions are indications of how to go from one scene to the next, usually cut to or fade to. They are written in all caps and they are usually aligned to the right, but you may write them in the action block as well. Only use them when you are trying to make a point on how the scene should be experienced. Camera directions are indications of camera shots or camera movements. You may find phrases like close on, dolly, zoom in, zoom out, etc. Camera directions are usually written in all caps in the action block. Again, use them sparingly. I personally try to avoid them to leave more freedom to the story artist and the director to approach the scene. Intercut is a formatting technique used in a scene when the action cuts back and forth between multiple locations. The best example is a phone call. Hello? Instead of constantly interacting the reading experience by adding a slug line each time the camera cuts to each one of the speakers, you can use intercut and just write it as a dialogue between two characters, even if they are in different locations. Hey, goodbye. Here's how you do it. You introduce your first location with its slug line, description and the first line of dialogue. Then you write intercut or intercut with or intercut as needed and introduce the second location. After that, you just write it as dialogue, which allows the reader to stay in the flow. Now you just need to apply these three final tips and you'll be ready to start writing. I can totally handle anything this baby can dish out. Number one, a sign of an amateur writer is to over-describe scenes and write long lines of dialogue, break long text apart and let the page breathe. Number two, the best way to master the format is by reading scripts. You can find them online and remember to consider joining our script reading club from the link down below. Number three, don't worry too much about the format. You can break the rules as long as what's going on on the screen is clear to the reader. When in doubt, just explain in plain English your intent and the reader will follow along. Now the only thing that's left is to click on this link to get your free guide. Keep it closed and consult it anytime you have a formatting question. Thanks for watching, I'm Pietro, this is Write for Animation and now go write something great.